Welcome to the self-save test prep. This is the self-save manager practice test. We have gathered 50 questions with explained answers from the self-save exam providers. So let's get started. Question 1. Which of the following is not something an employee will be restricted for? A. Having a persistent cough. B. Having an uncovered wound. C. Having a sore throat with fever. D. Experiencing diarrhea from an infection. And the correct answer is option D. Experiencing diarrhea from an infection. Employees with an uncovered wound, a persistent cough, or a sneeze or a sore throat with fever would only be restricted while employees experiencing diarrhea, vomiting or jaundice from an infection will be excluded. Question 2. You have been informed of a food recall. You should identify the item, remove it from inventory, label it and blank. A. Reheat it. B. Inform staff. C. Throw it out. D. Take a sample. And the correct answer is option B. Inform staff. Once the recall item has been identified, remove it from inventory and label it. Do not use and do not discard. You should inform staff of the recall and not to move the item. Question 3. When contacting your local regulatory authority after a reported foodborne illness, you should blank A. Contact the supplier B. Handle the issue without them C. Give them your temperature locks D. Throw away the food responsible And the correct answer is option C. Give them your Temperature locks. Local regulatory authorities investigate foodborne illness cases and should be contacted. You should give them any documentation you have on the reported illness, including temperature locks. Question 4 Your restaurant makes a TCS dish on site. Assuming it is properly labeled and stored, when must it be discarded? A. 2 days B. 3 days C. 7 days D. 10 days And the correct answer is option C. 7 days TCS food made on site and properly labeled and stored at a temperature of 41 degrees Fahrenheit or less can be stored for a maximum of 7 days. Question 5 What is the first thing you should do when notified by a customer of a foodborne illness? A. Throw suspicious food out. B. Contact your local regulatory authority and report it. C. Call a staff meeting to go over your food safety program. D. Collect their contact information, food eaten and symptoms. And the correct answer is option D. Collect their contact information, food eaten and symptoms. It's important to get as much information from the customer reporting the illness as possible including contact information, what food they ate and the symptoms they are experiencing. Question 6. For an illness to be considered a foodborne outbreak, how many people must be affected after eating the same food? A. 2 B. More than 5 C. 10 D. 10% of the people 
who ate the food? And the correct answer is option A, 2. Only two people must become ill after eating the same food for the illness to be considered a foodborne outbreak. Question 7. While everyone is at risk for foodborne illnesses, given the right circumstances, a few populations are much susceptible. Who of this is least likely to contract a foodborne illness? A. A healthy 3 year old. B. A 22 year old with HIV. C. A clinically obese 30 year old. D. A healthy 85 year old. And the correct answer is option C. A clinically obese 30 year old. Young children, the elderly, and those with weakened immune systems are more susceptible to contracting a foodborne illness while not being a desired trait in terms of optimal health. Obesity does not make one more susceptible to a foodborne illness. Question 8. A guest finds an adhesive bandage in his food. What type of contamination will this be considered? A. Cross B. Primary C. Physical D. Chemical And the correct answer is option C. Physical Physical contaminants are foreign objects such as plastics or metal pieces, fingernails or bandages. Question 9. Which of the following best represents a TCS food? A. Room temperature olive oil. B. Frozen fish in freezer storage. C. Baked potatoes on the counter. D. A ribay cooked and served rare. And the correct answer is option C. Baked potatoes on the counter. TCS foods need time and temperature control for safety and baked potatoes are dangerously close to the temperature range zone if not kept hot enough once baked. This question and answer choices given were intended to recall table 1.3 TCS food on page 1.8 of the 2017 FDA food code Updated 7th edition Subsave Manager book that introduces TCS foods as food most likely to become unsafe, while also testing critical understanding of pathogen growth, fat tom, and the TDZ. This question requires critical understanding of not only which foods are considered TCS, but also the concept of pathogen growth and what conditions and situations promote pathogen growth. Question 10. You receive a shipment of cold foods and notice the storage temperature is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. This will be a problem for all of these foods except A. Sprouts B. Poultry C. Sliced melon, D. Live shellfish, and the correct answer is option D. Live shellfish. 45 degrees Fahrenheit is an acceptable temperature at which to receive live shellfish, such as oysters, mussels, clams, and scallops, but other temperature controlled foods such as poultry. Cut melon and sprouts will be received at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. However, while it is acceptable to receive live shellfish at a temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit, it should be cooled to 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower within 4 hours. Question 11 Bacteria is most likely to thrive. In which type of environment? 
A. Arid. B. Moist. C. Oxygen rich. D. Temperatures over 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And the correct answer is option B. Moist. Bacteria thrive in moist environments between 41 to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Some do thrive in oxygen rich environments, but some do not. Question 12. One of the responsibilities of public health services is to A. Train your staff. B. Keep poultry, meat, and eggs safe. C. Create your personal hygiene program. D. Review and approve food safety plans. And the correct answer is option D. Review and approve food safety plans. PHS review and approve food safety plans as well as other duties. The USDA keeps poultry, meat, and eggs safe. And it's the food service manager's job to train staff and create a personal hygiene program. Question 13. Jessica needs to thaw some frozen chicken. Which method will not be appropriate? A. Microwave it. B. Put it on the counter. C. Put it in the refrigerator. D. Run it under cool water. And the correct answer is option B. Put it on the counter. Food should never be thawed at room temperature. Instead, refrost it in the microwave. Put it in the refrigerator or run it under cool water. Question 14. Chicken must be cooked to an internal temperature of blank to be considered safe for consumption. A. 135 degrees Fahrenheit. B. 165 degrees Fahrenheit. C. 175 degrees Fahrenheit. D. 185 degrees Fahrenheit. And the correct answer is option B, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. All poultry must reach and maintain an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Previous guidelines have indicated this temperature should be maintained for at least 15 seconds to be considered safe for consumption. However, Revision of FDA materials indicates that as of October 2018, the recommendation is for only less than one second. Question 15. Which of this is not a necessary item at a hand washing station? A. Hot water. B. Fresh receptacle. C. Electric hand dryer. D. Staff members must wash hands sign. And the correct answer is option C. Electric hand dryer. All hand washing stations must have at minimum hot and cold running water. A sign that directs staff members to wash their hands. A thrash receptacle, soap and a method for drying hands. In addition to an electric Hand dryer, single use paper towels are also an acceptable method for drying hands. Question 16 At what range within the temperature danger zone do pathogens grow even more rapidly if food spend too much time in or around the range? A. 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, B. 41 degrees Fahrenheit to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, C. 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 125 degrees Fahrenheit, D. 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 
125 degrees Fahrenheit. And the correct answer is option D, 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Time temperature abuse is responsible for most foodborne illnesses. And foods left in or around 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 125 degrees Fahrenheit for too long are at the greatest risk of pathogen growth. Question 17. A customer orders a muffin with their coffee. Which of the following is not an acceptable way to handle the muffin? A. With tongs. B. With a freshly gloved hand. C. Between a fresh Clean daily sheet. D. Quickly with bare hands only near the muffin paper. And the correct answer is option D. Quickly with bare hands only near the muffin paper. Muffins are considered ready to eat and should be handled with gloves, a daily sheet, or tongs because. Pathogens can be passed by food handler contact. Question 18. Which of this is incorrect regarding thermometers and food safety? A. You can recalibrate a thermometer using either ice point or boiling water methods. B. Infrared thermometers are the most accurate choice for both surface and internal temperatures c immersion probes on a thermocouple thermometer are used to measure the temperature of liquids d to get the most accurate reading the probe of the thermometer should be inserted into the thickest part of the food and the correct answer is option b Infrared thermometers are the most accurate choice for both surface and internal temperatures. Infrared thermometers should be used for taking surface temperatures only and are not an appropriate or accurate choice for taking an internal temperature. Question 19 To protect Against deliberate contamination, the FDA recommends you A. Install cameras B. Limit access to storage areas C. Never allow staff to accept deliveries D. Conduct background checks on delivery drivers And the correct answer is option B. Limit access to storage areas Food is at risk at certain times and places in your facility and a food defense program should be established similar to the FDA created alert program, assure, look, employs, reports, threat. To ensure your food comes from safe sources, to monitor the security of your food by limiting access to prep and storage areas, by knowing who is in your operation, by food defense reports being accessible, and by having a plan of action if a threat is identified. Question 20 Which of this will be an unsafe practice concerning ice usage? A. Using ice to cool food. B. Making ice from drinking water. C. Serving ice so a customer may cool coffee. D. Scooping ice out of the ice machine using a clean drinking glass. And the correct answer is option D. Scooping ice out of the ice machine using a clean drinking glass. Ice must be extracted from a machine using an approved scoop 
only drinking water must be used to make ice using ice to cool food or serving it to a customer for any use is permitted question 21 which of this will not be a reason to reject a shipment of canned food a the shipping carton is stone b some cans show dents at the seams c one of the cans appears to be swollen d this is evidence of can leakage on the bottom of the carton and the correct answer is option a the shipping carton is torn any cans which seem dense evidence of leakage or swelling should be rejected as this can be sign of food spoilage or the potential for it unless the carton tear involves the cans this should not matter in terms of food quality question 22 haccp is associated with a food protection b food service worker conditions c food service worker certification d food service historical documentation and the correct answer is option a food protection haccp stands for hazard analysis critical control point and helps to identify possible hazards in protecting food safety question 23 when inspecting incoming shipments of food the fahrenheit temperatures of the food should be blank a frozen 0 degrees or less cold 37 degrees or less hot 135 degrees or more b frozen 0 degree or less cold 41 degrees or less hot 135 degrees or more c frozen 0 degree or less cold 41 degrees or less hot 165 degrees or more d frozen 31 degrees or less cold 41 degrees or less hot 135 degrees or more and the correct answer is option b frozen 0 degrees or less cold 41 degrees or less hot 135 degrees or more these are the temperatures at which incoming food is safe to accept note that even though freezing is known to be 32 degrees fahrenheit self safe guidelines say the food must be frozen solid and that may require a much colder temperature to avoid food that has just begun to freeze therefore you should follow the fda and other health organization guidelines requiring a zero degree temperature when receiving food question 24 all of this are signs that a food may be unsafe except a cans with rust on that b a package that has been retaped shut c a carton that was delivered after business hours d frozen food with large ice crystals on the package bottom and the correct answer is option c a carton that was delivered after business hours provided your establishment has an agreement for receipt of deliveries after hours deliveries do not have to be rejected the agreement must state the details of deliveries that will be accepted such as the exact place of delivery and procedure for leaving the materials delivered ice at the bottom of a frozen food may indicate that it has been thawed and refrozen you should not accept any food 
that appears to have been opened and reclosed or that is in a rusted can. Question 25. FIFO stands for blank. A. First in, first out. B. Fall injuries, fail others. C. Food in, fast operations. D. Food inspection for optimum use. And the correct answer is option A. First in, first out. This is the required procedure for food use. Use the food that is acquired first before using later deliveries of the same food. Question 26. When stored in a refrigerator, which food should be kept on the bottom shelf? A. Fish B. Eggs C. Chicken D. Cut vegetables and the correct answer is option C chicken. When in cooler storage, whole and ground poultry should be kept on the lowest or bottom shelf to prevent cross contamination by raw juices potentially leaking or dripping onto ready to eat foods. Question 27 Which will not be a good practice? And cooling food. A. Cutting large food items into smaller pieces. B. Placing hot food in the refrigerator for quick cooling. C. Transferring food to smaller shallow pans for cooling. D. Placing containers of cooked food into an ice bath in another container for quick cooling. And the correct answer is option B, placing hot food in the refrigerator for quick cooling. Placing hot food in the refrigerator can cause a dangerous rise in temperature of the existing food in the refrigerator. Question 28. You have been out on vacation for a few days from your job. As a food service manager, Upon returning, you find a food in a walk-in refrigerator and are unsure of its safety. What should you do? A. Discard it. B. Examine the package for ribs or tears. C. Assume that the food is good if it is stored correctly. D. Ask employees who work with that food for their opinion and expertise. And the correct answer is option A, discarded. When unsure of a food safety, the rule is, when in doubt, throw it out. Regardless of others' opinions, the storage methods or the condition of the packaging. Question 29. Which of this is false regarding food service pest control measures? A. Pests can become resistant to pest control measures. B. Pesticides and their uses are regulated by federal, state, and local laws. C. Pest control measures may vary from region to region and from pest to pest. D. Purchasing your own pesticides is appropriate if they are bought from a reputable dealer. And the correct answer is option D. Purchasing your own pesticides is appropriate if they are bought from a reputable dealer. Licensed PCOs should be in charge of purchasing and applying pesticides in every food service establishment. All of the other options are true. Question 30. What should your facility do to slow the spread of norovirus? A. Clean up, warm it immediately. B. Discard all unused TCS foods. C. Cook foods to a minimum of 
135 degrees Fahrenheit. D. Only purchased from approved sources. And the correct answer is option A. Clean up, warm it immediately. Viruses like norovirus and hepatitis A cannot be prevented by minimal internal temperatures. So good personal hygiene, including reporting symptoms, illnesses, and cleaning up vomit is imperative. Question 31. The FDA is responsible for inspecting all foods except for which of the following? A. Bottled water. B. Canned goods. C. Infant formula. D. Meat poultry, and eggs. And the correct answer is option D, meat, poultry, and eggs. The FDA is responsible for inspecting infant formula, bottled water, and canned goods. But the United States Department of Agriculture is responsible for inspecting meat, poultry, and eggs. Question 32. What would be an inappropriate item to feature on a children's menu? A. Salmon sushi. B. Cornmeal crusted mahi mahi. C. Granola with blueberry yogurt. D. Spinach and ham stuffed baked potato. And the correct answer is option A. Salmon sushi. The FDA recommends that children's menus do not offer items that contain raw or undercooked meat, seafood, or eggs. Sushi typically contains raw seafood, so it will not be a good choice for a children's menu item. Question 33. The power goes out in your restaurant. As a manager, what is the First action you should take A. Write down the time B. Hook up the generator C. Throw out all TCS foods D. Check and record all food temperatures of frozen, refrigerated, and hot foods And the correct answer is Option A. Write down the time If there is a power outage at your restaurant. You should first make a note of the time so you know when the event occurred and can plan accordingly. If you have a generator, getting that operational will be an appropriate next step. Checking and recording the temperature of food is appropriate but does not need to be done immediately after the outage occurs. TCS foods do not need to be thrown away until they have been in the temperature danger zone for more than 4 hours. Question 34. Which of the following is not a potential source of chemical contamination? A. Toxins in fish. B. Not rinsing cleaners away. C. Incorrectly applied pesticides. D. A reaction between pewter and acidic foods. And the correct answer is option A. Toxins in fish. Toxins such as histamine occur when foods are time temperature abused. This is biological contamination. Question 35. Cross contact refers to the passing of blank to food or food contact surfaces. A. Dirt. B. Allergens. C. Chemicals. D. Pathogens. And the correct answer is option B. Allergens. Cross contact refers exclusively to the passing of an allergen to food. Of food contact surfaces. A food allergen is the protein in an ingredient that some people are sensitive 
2 and food allergens could put an allergic guest at serious risk of allergic reaction or in severe cases even death. Cross contact is not be confused with cross contamination which exclusively refers to the passing of pathogens from one person or surface to another. Cross contact and cross contamination are not to be used interchangeably. Allergen cross contact is only dangerous to someone who is allergic, whereas pathogens passed via cross contamination are potentially dangerous to everyone. Question 36 What type of thermometer will be best to check the internal? Cooking temperature of a pork roast A. Infrared B. Surface probes C. Bimetallic stamped D. Maximum registering And the correct answer is Option C. Bimetallic stamped Bimetallic stamped thermometers are the best for monitoring food and internal cooking temperatures due to the dimple sensor in the stem, infrared gauges, surface temperatures, maximum registering thermometers are found in equipment like dish machines and surface probes are used to check the temperature of surface cooking equipment like griddles. Question 37 Cooling food should move from 135 degrees Fahrenheit or higher to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in blank hours. A. 1 B. 2 C. 4 D. 6 And the correct answer is option B. 2 Cooling foods should move through the temperature danger zone as quickly as possible to limit pathogen growth and should move from their cooking or hot holding temperature to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in 2 hours. Question 38. What is the second sink in a three compartment sink used for? A. Rinsing B. Washing C. Scrapping D. Sanitizing and the correct answer is option A, rinsing. The correct setup and use of a three compartment sink is wash, rinse, sanitize, air dry. Question 39. Robert is using a cutting board for the same task during his entire shift. How often should his board be washed and sanitized? A. Every hour, B. Every two hours, C. Every four hours, D. Every six hours. And the correct answer is option C. Every four hours. You should clean and sanitize equipment, utensils, and surfaces after four hours of constant use. Question 40 Hot water used for sanitizing in a three compartment sink must be at least blank a 135 degrees fahrenheit b 165 degrees fahrenheit c 171 degrees fahrenheit d 191 degrees fahrenheit and the correct answer is option c 100 71 degrees Fahrenheit. When using a three compartment sink, the water used for sanitizing must be at least 171 degrees Fahrenheit to be effective, and items must be submerged for at least 30 seconds. Temperature requirements are different for automatic dish washing machines. Question 41. What is the first step in the flow of food? A. Holding B. Receiving C. Purchasing D. 
preparation and the correct answer is option c purchasing the part foods taken through your facility or the flow of food begins with purchasing from trusted and approved suppliers to ensure food safety question 42 Meg is serving a guest an allergen special order. What is the last thing she should do? A. Describe the dish. B. Identify the ingredients. C. Hand deliver the dish to the customer. D. Specify the special order to the kitchen. And the correct answer is option C. Hand deliver the dish to the customer. Once Meg and the other staff have ensured no cross contact with the allergen special order has occurred. The last thing Meg should do is hand deliver the dish to the customer. Question 43 Paul needs to check the temperature of reduced oxygen packaged items. How should he do it? A by laying a thermometer probe on top of a package. B. By placing a thermometer probe between two packages. C. By laying one of the packages on top of a thermometer probe. D. By piercing one of the packages and inserting a thermometer probe. And the correct answer is option B. By placing a thermometer probe between two packages the temperature of reduced oxygen packages and modified atmosphere packages like vacuum seal items should be checked by placing a thermometer probe between two packages this packages should never be punctured question 44 which of the following requires hand washing before and after the tasks a removing the trash b using cleaning chemicals safely c cleaning and sanitizing a prep sink d touching raw meat seafood or poultry and the correct answer is option d touching raw meat seafood or poultry Washing hands for 20 seconds is the easiest way for food handlers to keep foods and surfaces free of contaminants and should be done before work. After using the bathroom and before and after handling raw meat, seafood or poultry as well as after various other tasks. Question 45. EV is putting items into refrigerated storage. Which of the following is the correct shelf order? Top to bottom. A. Fresh ground beef, raw pork chops, fresh lettuce, raw chicken breasts. B. Fresh lettuce, raw pork chops, raw chicken breasts, fresh ground beef. C. Fresh lettuce, fresh ground beef, raw pork chops, raw chicken breast. D. Fresh lettuce, raw pork chops, fresh ground beef, raw chicken breast. And the correct answer is option D. Fresh lettuce, raw pork chops, fresh ground beef, raw chicken breast. Items in refrigerated storage have a specific shelf order to protect against cross-contamination. The order from top to bottom should be RTE foods, seafood, whole cuts of beef and pork, ground meats and ground seafood, and all poultry. Question 46. Broken glass in the ice machine is considered blank. A. A high risk, B. A pathogen, C. A control point, D. A physical contaminant. And the correct answer is option D. 
a physical contaminant. Any object that finds its way into food is a physical contaminant. Some examples include paper, metal, shavings, screws, seeds or peats left accidentally, bandages, false nails, broken glass, staples, etc. Question 47. At the receiving step, what is the correct way to check the temperature of a container of sour cream? A. By checking the air temperature of the delivery truck. B. With a biometallic stamp probe held between two containers. C. With a biometallic stamp probe inserted into an open container. D. By placing an infrared thermometer to the outside of the container. And the correct answer is option C. The biometallic stamp probe inserted into an open container. A biometallic stamp thermometer is the best way to monitor foods. A container that can be opened and closed should be checked by inserting a clean and sanitized thermometer into the food. Question 48 Emily is cooling two gallons of leftover chili. First, she must A. Divide the chili into airtight containers. B. Divide the chili into shallow plastic containers. C. Divide the chili into two tall stainless steel pots. D. Divide the chili into smaller shallow stainless steel pans. And the correct answer is option D. Divide the chili into smaller shallow stainless steel pans. Large amounts of hot foods should be divided into smaller shallow pans to increase the surface area before placing them in an ice bath or using an ice paddle to make the cooling process faster. Stainless steel pools heat away faster than plastic. Question 49. What is the minimum internal cooking temperature for injected meat? A. 135 degrees Fahrenheit for 17 seconds. B. 155 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds. C. 155 degrees Fahrenheit for 17 seconds. D. 165 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds and the correct answer is option c 155 degrees fahrenheit for 17 seconds minimum internal cooking temperatures reduce pathogens to save labels and certain foods require specific temperatures all ground meats and seafood injected meat Mechanically tenderized meat, ratits, and shell eggs being hot held need to cook to 155 degrees Fahrenheit for 17 seconds. Question 50. Never par cook for longer than blank. A. 30 minutes. B. 40 minutes. C. 60 minutes. D. 90 minutes. And the correct answer is option C. 60 minutes. Par cooking can help save time but requires written approval from your local regulatory authority never power cook for longer than 60 minutes then cool immediately label and freeze or refrigerate thank you for watching if you like this video then please like share and subscribe to our channel and
don't forget to share it with your family and friends.